Oh, man. All right. He's trying to lick my ear. So, as you can see, uh, I have a constant companion with me here on the show. Uh, we do have our buddy Sargon. Uh, he's always here. Um... I paid a lot of money for this body double. It's hard to tell. Like, if they were in the same room together, you might end up accidentally talking to the fake Sargon, which is, if you can't tell, it is this one. Um, he, uh, you know, from time to time, um, you can really, the, the really noticeable thing about, about him is that uh, uh, this one doesn't talk, um, and the other one doesn't shut up. So the real one never shuts up. That's really pretty much the only way you can tell them apart is... This one isn't going to talk very much, and the real one uh, is going to talk. So, um, basically, what we're going to do, what we're going to do now is we're going to, we're going to have our friend, good Sargon. Okay, this is this is a, he spooks me sometimes, but he's a good guy. Okay, he means well. Um, and we're going to have bad Sargon right here. The real Sargon. And he's going to talk about Portland and how there's a big siege. And how he, he doesn't like Americans doing stuff, I guess. So I guess we'll see. Let's, let's watch Sargon talk about how this is just all bad. Everything's bad. You would never be near something black except black t-shirts. I'm getting sick of seeing articles like this. Oh. Portland protests, federal agents abuse powers in their arrest. Yes. That the BBC can publish in this country because we're a million miles away from Portland. No one knows. In, in this country, in any other bloody country, and probably in most of the United States, what's been going on in Portland, Oregon, okay. because it's been happening for years, and we are seeing the natural, logical end point of what has been fostered in this city. Now, if you didn't know... Over the last five or six years, Portland's been something of a mecca for radical left-wingers. That <laughs> Portland has a lot of fucking money in it. And really what it is, is it just has a cool community. If you've ever been to Portland, it's basically just like vegans, people smoking weed, and like art, and then like they have a basketball team that they really enjoy. Oregon in general is... is not super left wing, although they do they do uh, lean blue. I mean, like there's people out in the eastern parts that are. I mean, they're basically Idahoans. Uh, Oregon is cool. Oregon's fine. It's fine. I've been moving there because it's safe. It's middle class. It's very progressive. Yeah, it's got money. It's pretty progressive, and basically the whole thing is if anyone who's ever been to Portland. You can, you know, you know the vibe. It's just like, hey, cool, man. That's it. That's the whole thing. Hey, cool. All right. Cool. Do, do what you want. Go get some vegan wings. Go get some regular wings, too. Doesn't matter. It's just like, Portland just has, like, that kind of chill vibe. Where you're just like, yeah, whatever. And this has led to what I guess we can really just openly call. Feel free to drop some subs there, Stag Almighty, on your way out. You never know. Just saying. A communist revolutionary sect that has taken hold in the town communist and appears to have sect. actual influence over the mayor and his policies. I'll show you what I mean. So, as I said, this began in 2016 oh, with Oregon, the, the riots that, that they had there. And they think around 4,000 people mm -hmm. um, took part because it's a very middle class place and he four injuries and 13 or 113 arrested but that's still huge and this carried on this is in 2017 the beginning where they were blocking traffic as usual blocking traffic you know the number one civil disobedience thing that is on my list of like things that we just cannot tolerate is like sometimes when people have something to say and then they, they stand in front of cars can you think of anything more egregious than standing in front of a fucking car I certainly can't that's uh wow that's a line that I would not personally cross, okay? I keep my political activities on the sidewalks, all right? As you should.
and the cops actually moved in and broke them up uh, because they were attacking drivers in their vehicles. There are lots of different videos of just mobs of Antifa, mostly... Mobs of Antifa in 2018. White, mostly middle class, university educated, yeah. privileged prats. Oh, oh, now they're privileged. <laughs> okay. Attacking people in their vehicles. And you think, okay, that's mad, isn't it? You know, I mean, there's lots of footage because they're all filming it. They're not ashamed of what they're doing at all, even though I would say... That, I mean, this is just a random guy in his car. I would say this... Consider the source. Maybe consider the source. No? Okay. This is absolutely terrible. And thankfully, you know, a bunch of them end up getting arrested. What a bloody group. What an absolutely predictable looking group. Oh, of course. It's predictable looking. Normal looking person. Older normal looking person. Normal looking person. Normal looking person. Florida man? Normal looking person. <laughs> what? What's predictable? Is it because this one person uh, who is... Was this Brittany Frost? Has purple hair? If Brittany decided not to dye their hair would you would you still be like oh yeah this is well you can go to any town in america and see this i don't know what that's purple i mean maybe there's pink over here it might look a little split this is purple though okay of people to be part of antifa but it just never goes on this is in 2018 october 2018 and it's just continued the the same sort of attitude the same kind of communist politics being Communist politics? What is communism? Okay. A revolutionary LARP being played out in the streets of Portland. And then in 2019, it started getting a bit more serious. Oh, yeah. They, they attacked Andy. That's because Sargon got fish thrown at him, and so he's like, yeah, solidarity, brother. Because, again, these just carry on. This is the culture of Portland is to protest against the white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. Like, it's... Just, that's endemic in that city. Andy No was attacked in the street where he was punched repeatedly in the face after being assaulted in various other ways. Oh, we should fucking weep for Andy. Uh, he ended up getting, I don't know, some sort of aneurysm on the brain or something like that. He had, he had an aneurysm on the brain. Andy No had an aneurysm on the brain? <laughs> he got hit. <laughs> he got food thrown at him. Oh, oh my God, dude! And he know a white, uh, white, widely known right wing propagandist, authoritarian, like sides weirdly with white supremacists almost always. Went into the middle of an Antifa rally and started talking shit. And they're like, fuck you, Andy, you piece of garbage. And they threw milkshakes at him. And they have a fucking aneurysm. People die from those all the time. <laughs> Grant Imahara just died from an aneurysm. This is. <laughs> Come on, bro. Why does he have to lie? Just, ugh. Oh. Bloody eye and whatnot. It looked pretty serious. Obviously, no one in the media cared, even though- Andy No gives people's information over to white supremacy groups. This was a journalist being beaten up by communist revolutionaries in the street, because Andy No's name to them is Satan. They- No, no, Andy exists. Hate Andy No, in, in the same way the feminists hate me. Uh, they, they think Andy No is an evil force. And- not evil, just bad. In 2019, it started getting more serious because you'd get opposition groups who didn't like seeing American cities being taken over by communists, people who describe themselves as patriots. In fact, this one was called Patriot Prayer, I believe. So if they call themselves patriots, then it's fine. You know, those patriots who walked up to the Capitol with guns 
and threaten people's lives because they were told to stay inside during a global pandemic? You side with those people? Of course he fucking does. Who just want to support, as far as I can tell, Americanism. And what they seem to be perceiving is communism <sighs> trying to it, it just overthrow Americanism. Which I guess is what we ended up seeing with... In we, we have this debate. What is Americanism? What is that? It's not a thing. That isn't a thing. And even so, even after having that, that conversation with me, just fucking just goes over it. He's like, fuck it, I don't care. I'm going to stick with this. I'm not an American, but now I know what Americanism is. I don't know. The fuck is Americanism? No fucking clue, Karen Hall. What's that Twitch Prime badge looking like? Oh, mm -hmm. In Seattle with the Chaz. These people would love to set up their own Chaz, especially as, oh, they... They joined in heavily when the George Floyd uh, murder happened. When all New sec, thanks. The riots started beginning. They, they were totally in on it. As you can see, thousands and thousands of people, all social distancing very diligently back in May. Um, and then they'd take to the streets with, I can't breathe. You, you know Shut how this goes. Up. You know the story because this happened in so many different cities. They go in and ran ransack the Justice Center. Um, then they sort of moved down to the business district shouting expropriate and that's how we know that this is a communist movement because that's a communist phrase no one else <laughs> outside of probably some arcane civil servant has ever used the term expropriate because it means to seize without compensation who does that thieves usually or communists Commun uh one of your greatest english heroes robin hood this bandits incidentally and so they they march down chanting communist rhetoric and start looting all of these stores i mean don't get me wrong i'm never going to shed a tear for looting. he's literally only just he's just following andy knows twitter thread this is the whole thing he's just like yeah whatever andy knows says is probably true louis vuitton last year i had to buy my wife a louis vuitton bag so to be honest with you it was a bit schadenfreude for me watching these <laughs> this store getting kicked in after i had to pay that much for the goddamn bag but either way it's wrong. You know, it doesn't matter whether I'm enjoying watching it or not, it's still wrong. So, afterwards, they, you know, start fires, burn stuff in the street after they've looted and burned everything. And, mm -hmm. again, we're, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars of damage. This is the big rub. This is the huge rub with this whole thing, okay? It's property. It's just, it's items. It's things. I mean, they're protesting the fact that you don't value human lives. And the only way that that gets through is by hurting your fucking pocket. Because you're unethical slime people. So capitulate. Or they're going to continue to burn your shit down. There's your choices. That's what it's come to. Because you wouldn't listen to the ethical argument. Hey, those are people. We don't care. Okay. Do you care about your property? I really care about property. It's the only thing I care about. Well, then fuck you. It's getting burned. That's what's happening. It's literally the case. That's, that's where you took it. You could have easily been like, you know what, maybe we should make systemic changes and listen to the people, the population of people who for hundreds of years have been saying, hey, this thing is fucked up. Maybe listen to them. Maybe. Probably could have saved yourself a lot of capital. Well, in fact, but my biggest seller on Redbubble is a drawing I made of the statue that Sargon used uh, as his avatar because it's a gorgeous statue. I sometimes wonder how many people buying that designer of Chud is thinking it's Carl Benjamin Fanner. Probably. Why not? But that's not the bit that bothers me the most. The bit that bothers me the most are things like this. As you can see, this is just arbitrary justice. This guy was carrying a US flag, so BAM! In the head, as he's laying on the floor. Absolute fucking scum. I hate it. I hate watching it. This, this is the... This... I mean, look at that man's face! Look at what they have done. Look at what they have done. Okay. You want to see you want to see what they have done? Let's do it. 
Let's do it. No, let's watch. Let's watch. Let's 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 see let's see something that they have done. Okay, look. There's an example of something that's been done. Look at that. He just didn't seem to give a shit when it happened to have a different hue. He didn't seem to give a shit when he looked like that. Why do you give a shit when he looks like this? Strange. I see I see a difference. I can't quite place it. Very strange. Weird. It's pretty odd. It's pretty odd that Philando Castile looks like this. Huh. Uh, doesn't quite look like that guy. Can't quite figure out the difference. Why don't you care about this at all? A law-abiding citizen with an open carry license. Law-abiding citizen. Okay. Okay. I mean, what about a child playing in a park? Is he not supposed to be able to play in parks now? Is that not American enough for you? Is this not Americanism enough for you? Or are you fucking... A little bit of a difference, I guess. There's a little bit of a difference here. Okay. Strange. Oh, look. Brianna Taylor. Hmm. Hmm. What could what could be the big difference here? Odd. Okay. I think everyone fucking gets it. Why do you only give a shit when this guy gets kicked in the fucking face? And granted, hey, I don't want to see people getting kicked in the face. I get it. Violence isn't a fucking, like, super great thing all the time, okay? I'm not a fan. I don't know. I don't know what this has. It says, a man, uh, tried to help the man carrying U.S. flag is getting beat on the ground. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's be real. Andy No probably editorialized this. This guy probably said something stupid, and they're, then they're like, okay, fuck you then. And he's like, no, fuck you. I'm tough. I'm American. And he got his ass beat. I mean, he's probably talking shit. I don't know if that's the case, but let's just, let's just be fair. Andy No has a really bad fucking reputation for making this shit. Excusing, like, racists and murderers and, like, Charlottesville. Like, like, come on. So, if this upsets you, a black person looking very similar to this under the boot of an authoritarian fascist cop, you should probably feel the fucking same way, Carl. But you don't. You just fucking don't. Because he was carrying an American flag. This is why communists are scum. Absolute scum. They do not value human life. And so they must be remembered to be... That's their belief system. They don't care. They don't believe that all lives matter. They believe some lives matter. And there's a good chance that you're not in that category. They believe that some lives matter, not all lives matter. <laughs> he just fucking can't help from dog whistling. He just can't help it. I'm not a communist, okay? I'm not a communist. I think that communists, long-term, probably correct. But I can't be that today. Today, communism doesn't make a lot of sense. But let's set the groundwork. Let's set the groundwork and move left. Because, yeah, it probably is the case that we need to fucking detach ourselves from the fetishization of labor. We need to detach our value of a person based on how productive they are. We need to detach our value on hierarchies. We need to detach ourselves from the idea that we knew need to be a member of labor to live. We need to detach ourselves from the idea that humans deserve to live shittily if they can't produce. Yeah. Absolutely. 100% agree. But this guy goes, Ah, oh, they don't care about human life. Motherfucker! These riots are for human life! That's what they're for! If they didn't value human life, this dude right here, he'd be dead! They'd have killed him! Kicking a dude in the head is not not valuing human life. Even if it was entirely unjustified. Even if this guy out here was just like... Even if he was... Even if he, this guy's a full fucking commie, right? Even if this guy's a commie, he totally agrees with Antifa. Just happened to be carrying an American flag. They took it the wrong way. Uh, because white supremacists have been carrying fucking American flags all over their shit. They run up on him, punch him, kick him in the head once. Okay? Is that good luck? No. Does that mean they don't value human life? No. Not at all. Not the fuck at all. Oh, Brent. Of course your name is Brent.
Oh, that's sad. <laughs> oh, hey, can we get F's in chat for anyone named Brent? You should change your name. That's a bad look. Sorry. Sorry, Brents. I'm sure there's like one good Brent in here, but that's a rough one. Yikes. My name's Brent? Ugh. So you're, you're a verge. Okay. Alright. Yikers. So, the question is, how do the authorities in Portland think about this? What are they going to do? Well, Mayor Ted Wheeler stood by his decision to allow Antifa to block traffic and attack drivers for some reason. I mean, why would you allow ga gangs of masked vigilantes who are just raging about such abstract, like, oh, it's the white supremacy. What are you talking about? Point to it. We good? There it is. There's one. Alright. Cool. Let's move on. Morons. But anyway, to bully and harass and to generally use just mob power over the regular citizens of Portland. Unacceptable. That's unacceptable. That can't be allowed to happen. But it was okay because their response. When we talk about fear, that's what black people feel every single day. When you're going to the grocery store, you're crossing the street in response to the George Floyd death. And it's like, okay, but why does that mean that everyone has to live in fear? Black Lives Matter saying black people every day walk in fear. When you go to the grocery store, when you cross the street, does not mean that they want everyone to live in fear. Her ramble was just a gorilla. Thanks, Mama. What well, there's they're not what the argument is not we want everyone to live in fear. The argument is we no longer want to live in fear. What is your brain? <laughs> what? Well, if we have it bad, then everybody should have it bad. No, motherfucker! It's literally arguing the opposite. They're saying, no, it's bad. No one should have to live in fear about immutable facts about themselves. Being black should not be a possible death sentence when you're jogging in your neighborhood and you happen to check out a building that's being built. You shouldn't be lynched for that. Surprise. Rubik's Fighter, I will... If you subscribe, <laughs> only corns get shout outs. That's a fact. Oh, that's equality, isn't it? That's what equality is. If not everyone gets to not live in fear, then everyone has to live in fear. No, Carl, you idiot. Or else it's inequality. And inequality is for some reason bad. Her ramble was just a Bro, Numi, thanks so much for converting a Twitch Prime to a tier one. Hey, for the record, for the record, guys, we got brand new tier two cobbies. Brand new ones. Look at those sexy boys. We got a gamer cobby, a commie cobby, and a pride cobby. Oh, yeah. Comrade cobby for tier two subs. And you're not done yet. We're getting even more. This, this idea that equality... No, Rubik's Fighter. Fuck off. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here with that. No way. No way. You kidding me right now? I'm not shouting out your stupid fucking friend. Fuck that guy. D just said inequality is good. Yeah, he did. <laughs> if you ain't corn, you're wheat. That's a fact, okay? If you ain't corn, you're wheat. Okay? Yeah, he just said inequality is a good thing. Okay? Here's the thing, okay? Again, he fundamentally misunderstands. We're not saying that people are all equal. Okay? I'm not LeBron James. Okay? I can't dunk. Surprise. Can't dunk. I, I got close in high school, but I can't dunk now. Okay, I'm not 6'8". I'm not this m muscly, beautiful man with a big beard. Okay? I have a beard, I guess. I'm sort of beautiful. Whatever. So, 
Uh, I'm not LeBron James. We're not equal, okay, in lots of facets. That said, under the law, we should be treated equally. 100% agree. Now, he would say that you are. Okay, cool. Now, beyond that, socially, we should be treated equally to an extent. Now, I'm not going to get his fan base. You know, I'm saying he's not going to get mine, whatever. There's, there's, there's these things that he shouldn't be experiencing, like racism, right? He shouldn't experience racism. He shouldn't experience anything bad about ex existence. People should not be allowed or feel comfortable being, being assholes to people for no reason. Like, if you're an asshole to someone because they, like, cut in front of you or something, you know, on a road. Okay, probably, you know, road rage isn't great, but, like, at least you're justified a little bit. You get to be mad about that. You don't get to be mad because a person driving in front of you is black. You don't get to be mad about that. You do not get to, and you should not feel comfortable in this country. Furthermore, it's not about equality of outcome. It's never been about equality of outcome, okay? Again, I'm not LeBron James. I have not earned his money, okay? That said, I think he's grossly overpaid. <laughs> Grossly overpaid. He's a billionaire. But again, that's how our system works right now, and that's okay. But I don't have the accomplishments he is. I haven't put the work in he has. Uh, and I don't have the skill he has or the natural, just the natural inequalities that we were born with that he has. <coughs> so we're, we're, all we're doing is, is adjusting for that. It's like, okay. Now, most people aren't LeBron James. This is an extreme example. But most people are like, you know. Give or take, you're roughly about the same. You know, all of us are roughly about the same in some ways. You know, you're gonna be, you're gonna excel in certain areas. You're gonna you're gonna not be good in some other areas, and that's fine. But all of us, roughly, except for the exceptional ones among us, we're people. We're just people hanging out. The idea is equality of opportunity. Everyone should have the opportunity to be healthy, to have food and shelter, and water and education, and all these things that help us continue to be as equal as possible. Now you can opt out of all these things. And that's fine. You can choose you can choose not to do any of those things. I'm totally fine with that. But it's not it's not about a quality of outcome. And I don't know why he constantly and people like him, I don't know why Carl can't get over this shit. He has been told a million times it's not about a quality of outcome. And yet he persists. And I think personally it's because the grift doesn't work without it. This was just nonsense. And this is this has fueled a narrative that has been going around. And I've heard, literally heard, that it is white supremacists wearing black <coughs> lycra suits who are going into Portland and causing the trouble and very and, and in not just in Portland but in other situations and then that argument we was literally confirmed by a Black couple Lives of those. Activists. for the record that was confirmed a couple times same it's to me that white supremacists were committing the murders in places in black neighborhoods in Chicago and Detroit and other cities like this like <laughs> the, the 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 levels of delusion are off the charts no it's not a delusion it's it's like literally confirmed factually confirmed events of these things happening. What? We are in absurd realms of fantasy and make-believe, and the mayor of Portland is fine with this. Again, th this, is that, this is now on June the 6th. After, again, more rioting. Remember, 50, 50, 60, uh, 51 days, I think it's been now, 51 days of straight rioting. Have you considered listening to them? Have you considered listening to them? Hey, what do you guys want? Oh, stop killing black people, please. And here's a list of other things. Police reform being one of them. Mm, what if our response was militarized police? That's the opposite. They're gonna, I mean, they're fighting back against fascism. I mean, just come on. Every night, it's just the culture of Portland to do this. And back in June, he said that, no, we shouldn't use sonic warning tones to control crowds, which seems like a great way of getting people to piss off to me, because it doesn't hurt them. No violence involved, they'll just disassociate because it's unpleasant to be around. Perfectly good way, a perfectly non-violent, as in a perfectly liberal way to control a protest.
and he wants to ban tear gas. I don't know whether he ever did it or not, but let's just assume he did because who cares? Let's assume he did because who cares? First of all, tear gas is against the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> you can't gas people. <laughs> we can do it to American citizens. That's fine. Totally fine. This guy's a fucking idiot. I hope he gets tear gas. Someone tear gas his house in Minecraft. No, not his house. His kids are there, right? Probably. Tear gas his car. There you go. Fucking idiot. He should really experience tear gassing if he thinks it's totally ethical to be used. That's what I'm saying, basically. Just stand there, get fucking tear gassed, maybe shoot it into his solar plexus, right? A little canister. Maybe hit him with a rubber bullet. Let him really experience these things he thinks are totally ethical to use on human beings. Ted Wheeler is a radical leftist, right? We must acknowledge that our system of white supremacy lays the foundation for white nationalism to exist. Yes. This is real. Yes. <laughs> we must support black Portlanders if you can find any. Okay, let's see the let's let's see. I don't know. What's the Portland's ethnic makeup? I don't know. Is that a way is that a way to do it? Uh uh three percent black. 3% black in Portland. Uh, 5% Asian. Uh, and then they break that down further. Uh, like Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, etc. 3% um, uh, are multiple races. 4.1% uh, are other. Uh, Hispanic and Latino make up 8%. Seems like a... Yeah, it's... Yeah. Actually, that's an old one. That's actually old. It's actually 6% now, according to the census. 6% of, of Portland, Oregon is black. 8% Asian. Actually, the white percentage has gone down to 77%. Yeah. I don't, I don't even fucking understand. Like, okay... <clears throat> we must acknowledge that our system of white supremacy lays the foundation for white nationalism to exist. This is real. Carl laughed. Okay. Our system of white supremacy exists. And it it starts with the literal founding of the country by white people enforcing slavery, chattel slavery, on the black population. It's literally foundational. How do you how do you argue against it? Well, in the sixties they did the Civil Rights Act. And that's it? As now it's done? We don't have a foundation of white and supremacy? People's personal opinions have been affected. Once that law went into place, people in Mississippi, right? Racists, deep Mississippi, sitting there, he he spits into his spittoon. And he looks, you know what? Them N-words ain't so bad after all. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Come on. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. For whom this is familiar and terrifying, and we must continue work of reform. What are you talking about? The we are not a system of white supremacy. Now, who's we? You are in England. Who is we? Yes, we in America are literally in a system of white supremacy. It's f foundation. It's fundamentally foundational to the the beginning of the country. I I, I just I I literally can't even. I literally cannot even figure out how you would disconnect that. You can't talk about the beginning of the country or 400 years of this country when it's colonies. Colonies that, by the way, England supported and profited off. Just because you banned slavery on your soil doesn't mean you didn't fucking integrate with it. God. Or interface with it, rather. Now, I can go into depth and explain why what he thinks of white supremacy is just 
Western liberal democracy, but I Okay, you should, but I'm not going to because it'd be wrong. I'm going to save it for another time, mm -hmm. but this is pure yeah, yeah. Robin. He's saving it for another time. When pressed about this, he doesn't have any qu answers for this, for the record. D'Angelo, coming out of Ted Wheeler's mouth. He is as radically left as the rest. When a group of them came out to his uh, apartment to complain that he wasn't essentially endorsing the Chaz in Seattle, he had to come out and make a statement about it. Now, he was, he was convinced that this, this revolutionary Chaz, this autonomous zone, was a distraction from the movement's larger goals. I mean, maybe, maybe it is, but to be honest with you, Ted, kind of looks like that, that's baked into the movement's fundamental goals, because if you think that your country is a white supremacy, then the only way to get rid of that is to get rid of what makes your country your country. Isn't it, Ted? I mean, that probably... What? What's the part that he thinks would get rid of that? Includes the position of mayor. That's a hierarchical, authoritarian... <laughs> Are we getting rid of hierarchies? I mean... <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that modern communists understand that the hierarchies are in place right now today. Okay? And then you need... To, you, you need the lattice of government to kind of push back and, and, and mold into what you want, even if that includes a, a dissolving of government, which I disagree with, so I don't know. Aryan, white supremacist invented system, yes. and you, a white man, yes. is, are occupying it. Yes. How do you justify yourself, Ted? But he says, well, I'm not in favor. I'm not on the same. Of course you're not, because you're a hypocrite. But despite the fact that he doesn't want to abolish his own job, he's more than happy to abolish the jobs of the Portland police by defunding them. Yeah. As in accordance with the rest of the protests, uh -huh. with the communist movement that is sweeping the left in America. The inevitable conclusion of what Bernie Sanders has been fermenting when he uses over and over and over oh. the dog whistle that is revolution. <laughs> Bernie, when did you make this? July 18th? Bernie Sanders isn't in the fucking race. What? <laughs> this guy's a fucking idiot. God, he's so stupid. Instead of just talking, Carl, why don't you listen? Why don't you listen? Yes, defund the police. Get them the fuck out of there. They are not qualified for the jobs that they are told to do. What an idiot. He thinks, I guess, the crocodile will eat him last. You'll be the last mayor in the, in the communist United States, Ted. I'm sure they won't come for you. Anyway, the, the people who are arrested from all of this, obviously, with, you know, guns, knives, any other kind of... Oh, oh, guns and knives. We can't have guns and knives now. Can't do that. Nope. Second Amendment. I'm for it until I'm against it. Idiot. Cupcake Chaos. Thank you for gifting a sub to You're Not My Dad. I appreciate you, Cupcake Chaos. Hey, any other subbers out there? I'm looking at a lot of non-corns. A lot of corns are in need right now. There's a lot of corns in need. They got little coughs from COVID. They got to stay at home and eat burritos out of the freezer. And they need your subby wubbies. Okay? They need them. Uwu oil barons? They need them. Look at them. How are they going to have any cobbies? How are they going to butter their, their elote if they don't have corn? Ted is also the sheriff. Is he not the mayor? He was calling him the mayor the whole time. I didn't even, I didn't even think to fact check that. Miss Kays, thank you for the tier one so much. Fifteen months! Fifteen big ones. What is on the gamer cob emote? Here, I'll spam him so you can see. He has a little hat that says gamer. And the PewDiePie bro fist and a G Fuel shaker cup. <laughs> for when I play games and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You get basic copy though. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's tier two. You get basic copies at tier one. And we're gonna we're gonna dress up the copies. I'm gonna have deluxe copies for tier three. Black Rabbit, thank you so much for the tier one given to Blitter. That's very nice of you. All right, continuing on. You can't have guns if you're a lefty, okay? That's when we don't like the Second Amendment. What did I say? What did I say, by the way? Once, once fucking people of color and, and leftists start getting guns, you'll see a real quick turnaround on their pro-Second Amendment stance. And you can think of uh, just the most cringe... Middle class lappers. I mean, just look at these people. Yeah, look at them. Oh, man, what a normal looking individual. Look at them. Terrible. Just look at them. That's a normal. This looks like fucking Donut Operator, who is a right winger and pro Second Amendment for a person. <laughs> what is wrong? Total what, are what are you talking about? Great, what are you doing? They look normal. You are. What are you. A four foot 11. Four foot 11. 18 year old revolutionary. Really? Really? Is that that what we're looking at? Is it nineteen? These all look like normal people. What are you doing? This is not going to build a better world. I mean, the the the, the cultural revolution really is happening in Portland, isn't it? It's un unreal. What's not going to have a better world? This guy, okay, Carl, right now is looking at pictures of the Freedom Riders. Like just 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 move the move this time scale up fifty years from now. These are gonna be like our freedom riders, kind of. Some of these people are gonna get political office and they're gonna talk about this. Like, oh, we fucking we went to jail and protested on on behalf of Black Lives, right? He's literally looking at pictures of these people and being like, no, no. And Flavor, that's a good point. By the way, Andy, no doing this is literally a signal to far right groups who they should harass or murder. This has been documented. Yeah, this is true. This is too. But again, it's not to say that anything got any better. Again, this is June. This is in July. This carried on right up until this month. Antifa takes an older man's and bike. So, okay, this guy was being racist, though. Finally, this one. after the riots in Portland going on on a semi-regular base for, uh, basis for the, at least the last four Ooh, years, get and intensifying into almost two months of continuous rioting... Uh-huh. Under the purview of President Donald Trump. That have been honestly awful. Just the, the end of human rights in Portland. The end of human rights in Portland. Standing up for human rights is anti-human rights. We got them, boys. That's the argument, okay? If you stand up for the rights of your fellow man, woman, whatever, non-binary friend, okay? And they happen to be black... That's not human rights at all! Jesus fucking Christ. As we're seeing here, where insufferable leftist activists feel that they have license to attack anyone they like because, screw those people, they disagree with them, and the mayor of Portland supports them, spouts all the re rhetoric, believes their worldview, and defunds the police, <coughs> is it any wonder that after all of this, it is necessary and good to bring in the feds, the federal police, the federal authorities. And man, this was not well accepted in Portland. I thought we were about states' rights. I thought that's what it was. Why weren't we doing states' rights? I need it with a hundred biddies! Feeding, feeding the corns in the field with a hundred biddies of fertilizer. I wonder what his opinion of how hippies looked when they stood up against war because of how flower power, long hair, and free love. Hippies are romanticized now, but I bet at the time he would have been like, oh, these people think they'll make a difference. Exactly. <coughs> for the record, for the record, before he even begins, you cannot be unmarked as a federal agent. You cannot go outside of the purview of what your federal agency uh, is protecting. In this case, it was like uh, just the federal building, right? It was the, um, uh, was it the Homeland Security building? Was it the, uh, uh, there was something there. Embassy, maybe? Um, and you can't fucking snatch people without giving them their Miranda rights, 
Like, there's a whole bunch of fucking things that they did wrong here. Whole bunch. You can't do these things. So, acting uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, a man who I believe is unironically called Chad Wolf, which is the best name I've ever heard, said the city of Portland has been under siege for 47 days straight by a violent mob while local political leaders refuse to restore order and protect their city. The Department of Homeland Security stands ready to, sta to assist to bring this violent activity to an end. That is the liberal thing to do. Yeah, it would be liberal, wouldn't it? Yikes. Imagine celebrating libs. Ugh. Law and order is the foundation of a liberal democracy. Law and order. Sounds like you want to be stepped on. Portland has seen an end of law and order and has resorted to mob rule. The mayor of Portland permits this. It is right and just for the federal government to do something about that, to protect the city, the citizens of Portland from what appears to be a kind of occupying mob. Naturally, Ted Wheeler says no, he doesn't want any help. He has it fully under control, which really makes you question what Ted Wheeler's actual, actual agenda is, doesn't it? If this is how he wants it, then what is he trying to achieve? But uh, thankfully, the Department of Homeland Security took none of this nonsense. <coughs> instead of addressing violent criminals in their communities, local and state leaders are instead fo focusing on placing the blame on law enforcement and requesting fewer officers. This is going to go brilliantly, isn't it? Because they're shooting at protesters with weapons. That's it. Now, there was a list of attacks done by Antifa that the, gov the, the Home Department of Homeland Security released uh, two days ago now. And Andy No did a quick thread in it. And these are the ones that he picked out that really stood out to him. Yeah, because Andy is a very reliable source of information. Reminder. Andy is a reliable source of information. Uh, July, the, uh, 4th of July. Multiple individuals seen carrying rifles, including the driver of a vehicle who attempted to strike an, an officer. Violent anarchists held a night of rage in which a 400 to 500 person protest devolved into riots, assaulting law enforcement officers and federal property with rocks and bottles. July the 10th. Violent anarchists attempted to ambush <laughs> Portland Police Department during their shift change but a DHS team was deployed and able to prevent any attacks. What the hell is going on? Like, do you see any of this on the news? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't watch like the news, but yeah, on here, all, all sorts of Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah, I absolutely do see that shit all the time. What are you talking about? It's like my new, it's like my whole feed is about Portland, like all the time. I don't know. You guys see this shit too? I feel like I do. I feel I feel like I'm pretty inundated with this shit. Anybody else? Algae of the sea definitely does. No corn, but that's fine. If you're not corn your wheat, just saying. Orphan Annie, not corn your wheat. Does is this covered <laughs> at all by the BBC when they sit there and go, Well, I mean look at this. This is this is federal agents abusing their power. Is it really? Is it really? I mean it doesn't sound like it, you know? But anyway, it's been bad. It's been out of control, and... Yeah. Well, is it out of control? <laughs> to anyone else, this would appear out of control, but it's because of the permissiveness of the left-wing mayor. Anyway, so the feds came in, and good. I, if I was a citizen of Portland, I'd be begging for them to come and restore some order, so I could walk down the street without being assaulted by communists. <sighs> and obviously, Ted Wheeler came out and denounced this. A number of people have asked, if I know DHS leadership in town, if I'm going to meet with them, we're aware they're here, we wish they weren't, we haven't been invited to meet with them, and if we were, we would decline. Oof. But that's not good. That's really not good. And, of course, he came out and blamed the riots on Donald Trump and the government. The, the riots are in response to that. Yes. What? Uh, actually, the riots were happening five straight weeks before DHS came. Yes! You're escalating them with, with the, the Homeland Security. What are you talking about? And yes! They're in response to Donald Trump's America! Yes! That's what they've been saying! 
How are you so stupid? They've been saying this for years. Hey, that guy's a fucking fascist. He's a racist. I'm not for black lives getting murdered in the streets by cops. I'm for defunding the police. And then Donald Trump and the Department of Homeland Security escalate the problem. They literally are like, oh, there seems to be a fire here. And everyone's going, yeah, can you uh, pour some water on it? And they go, well, I don't know, Donald. Uh, what do you think? And Donald goes, I don't know. Well, I, I have some, I, I have some gasoline, which is very similar to water in many respects. Pour that on, and then they pour the fucking gasoline on the fire. That's not water at all. It's not the response that you should make. It isn't. The response that you should make is going, huh? What's the what's the thing they're saying? The police are too militarized. They escalate problems. They kill black people. Maybe if we stopped doing the police stuff, they wouldn't have anything to riot about. I don't know. I don't know. Do you? The, the Department of Homeland Security. How is it Trump's fault that this is going on? The election of Trump was a national affair. It is not his fault that you have allowed communists to take over your city and run <laughs> rampant. It's just, it's your fault. It's your fault that it's come to this. It's your fault that you haven't been arresting the suspects that are required to now be arrested. You can't arrest somebody for them being a communist, dude. This guy's fucking full McCarthy. It's just so sad, man. This guy is supposed to be like a skeptic and like a thinker and some shit. It's so weird how the grift works on the right, man. It's just dog shit. The ringleaders, the people who are ginning all of this up, the people who are operating freely in these communities to commit acts of terrorism. They don't want police in their community, and you keep forcing police in their community. I'm sorry, is there... In the Declaration of Independence, or in the Constitution... Is it like in the Bill of Rights, where it says... You must accept police in your community. Is that a thing? I feel like that's not a thing. Uh, it doesn't look like a thing. I'm reading it. Well, it, doesn't say, it doesn't say anything in here about... It doesn't say anything in here about police at all, does it? Not forced to quarter a soldier. Huh. One of the early one was definitely a three-fifths compromise. So there's that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if this is necessarily a good thing. I don't know if this supports, hey, it's constitutional to put police in places where people don't want them. The communists are taking over, yep. Uh-oh. Check page 69. Let's see what on page... What's on page 69 of my combo of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States? That's weird. It just says nice. It just says nice. Mm. Ah, this is about the president. It's just about the president. In case you want to look at that. There you go. <sighs> it's your fault that this has had to happen. It is not wrong that after 50 days of protest with them attacking, say, the federal courthouse, that and with with you instructing the Portland police to be lenient and you know increasingly more lenient to the point where you're defunding the police, it is not wrong for them to come in and do something about this. It is wrong that the mayor of Portland facilitated this. 
The Guardian, of course, can get in the goddamn sea, and I am so glad that recently they had to cut 180 jobs from their paper. I mean, I can't imagine what on earth The Guardian does that justifies the employment of 180 people, for a start. But good to see that they're on the, the side of law and order and common sense. Oh, Trump's DHS is out of control. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's them who is out of control. It's them. It's, it's not Portland. It's the people who have got to clean up the mess. They're unmarked, Carl. How is he this fascist? How is he this fascist? It's... Portland is not under direct control of the United States government. It can do whatever they want. Their city's elected official is on their side. They have elected to live in that city and elected a person and people to have the jobs that control that city and they have decided that the things they are doing are good. How am I suddenly more states' rights than Republicans? How is that a thing that happened all of a sudden? What? Thank you, cold... What is it, cold coffee? Thanks for following. Not your fucking city, man. I don't know. And now the leftists get stand signs and say, no, any use of force to stop this is unjustified. No, it's totally justified. You get what you fucking deserve. There was, of course... <laughs> it's justified! Uh, how do we justify that, Carl? Because you get what you deserve. That's not really what justification means. You get what you deserve. Okay. Of course, a battle between the protesters and the DHS forces. But thankfully, I can tell you that these were routed by a good old-fashioned legionary charge at the barbarians by the forces of civilization, and they were triumphant. Did you know that the ideal civilization is to, when, upon seeing a group of people live a way that you disagree with, sending in uh, highly armed uh, professional individuals to trample, uh, to trample upon them um, um, and make sure that they can't live the way that they want to live because it's different than the way you like. That's, this is the way. True. Expect now to be gaslighted on a legendary level as verified check marks and the media outlets that they operate attempt to tell you that nothing bad happened in Portland. There was no violence or destruction or anything illegal. This was all completely peaceful and Trump just did this out of the blue because for some reason he wants to oppress people. Get ready to be gaslit to hell and back. He doesn't even know what gaslit means. And it's not just the mayor's office that's going to push back against federal involvement here, even though I think federal, federal involvement looks totally justified. The state attorney general of Oregon is filing a lawsuit against the Department of Homeland Security to try and stop them from stopping this violence. You can't... I don't know if it's because he's from England or if he's just stupid, or if it's both. But, like, you cannot have government control a city. In a state. When the citizens are doing a thing that you don't like. It just, it's not constitutional. It just isn't. If it can happen here in Portland, it can happen anywhere. Like, they've just entered some 1984 dystopian hellhole out of nowhere for no reason. Just for the sheer sake of oppressing them. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. It is justified. Totally, totally justified for the federal government... It's not constitutional. ...to restore law and order in Portland, since it appears that the authorities that have been elected in Portland have been elected by a group of radical communists who do not otherwise accept the authority of their elected representatives. 
What are you talking about? Their elected representatives in their city are like, this is fine. We don't want federal uh, injunction whatsoever. We don't want the feds here. Their local government is literally supporting them. Carl, what? An endless cold. Thank you so much for the prime. You're the best. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. But anyway, pisses me off. It really annoys me. Arrest them all charge them all they should all every single one of these rioters should end up with a criminal record at the end of this <laughs> look at this fucking idiot are you kidding me right now god what a goddamn idiot okay all right no thanks bud no fucking thank you no fucking thank you